Stop me if you've heard this one before, but you're jumping to different player camps looking for good deals on weapons, apparel, or plans that you don't have, and you find a camp that seems loaded. But when you get there, everything is overpriced. Boring camp items being sold for thousands of caps each as if the average player even has that much on hand. Profit isn't just about how many bottle caps you can squeeze out of a single customer, but it's about creating a steady influx of caps. You can't make profit if no one can afford your products. Mastering the art of sales with your vendor is the best method to maximizing your caps if you do it right. And you don't even have to be a veteran player, new players can do it too. So sit back, relax, ish, and get ready to absorb a lot of information. And feel free to take some notes. This video will teach you how to maximize profits from vending machines, including an in-depth price guide and player etiquette. So let's discuss wasteland capitalism. First, we need to cover the basics. Because if you don't follow the rules, you won't make any sales. Your vending machine needs to be easily accessible. No one is going to spend an hour running around your camp looking for your vending machine. They'll look for maybe a minute, and if they can't find it, they'll just give up and move on to the next camp. So make sure your vending machine is out in the open. Or at the very least, use arrows to guide players in the right direction. Finding the vending machine isn't the only requirement that you need to meet. Your prices cannot be whatever they want. So stop looking at all these spreadsheets and guides with arbitrary prices set at unrealistic standards that result in zero sales. You need to set prices that people can afford. Arbitrary spreadsheets don't set value. Something is only worth what people are willing to pay. And no one is willing to pay 6,000 caps for your Windigo tube or 30,000 for your TV aquarium. With that being said, not everything has to be sold. You are allowed to have nice things. If you spend days grinding for a rare clothing item just to put it up for sale for 20,000 caps without using it yourself, that way no one gets to enjoy it because, let's face it, no one is going to buy it. So if you're not going to use it, set an affordable price. Now let's go ahead and talk about pricing. When selling your extra plans, you need to set price based on actual market value, how many are in rotation, and how sought after these items are also known as supply and demand. You should not be setting prices based on some arbitrary system or spreadsheet. A good general rule of thumb for pricing plans is what I like to call the 10% rule. Your prices should be no more than 10% of the default listing price, with few exceptions. If an event plan's default pricing is 1,000 caps, then you should sell it for no more than 100 caps. Not 2,000, not 5,000. If a power armor piece's default price is 500, you should sell it for 50 caps or less. The rule has a few exceptions such as exclusive items, like the Nuka-Cola clock, which is only obtained by spending around 200 caps at the Responder vendor bot. But its default listing price is set at 100 caps, so that's obviously not going to work. Actual rare plans with exclusivity are the exceptions to the 10% rule. But that doesn't mean you can join the bandwagon of outrageously overpricing your plans. The higher you set your prices, the average person that sees your camp is less likely to buy your stuff. Of course, you can go higher than 10% on the average item if you want, but just know that the higher the price, the less likely someone will purchase it. Especially if the item isn't actually that rare. The only excuse for overpriced items is that it's the standard and everyone does it, but the problem is that you see it in almost every camp, meaning that no one is actually buying their plans. Selling ammo is truly a hidden gold mine in Fallout 76. Setting prices for ammunition is extremely straightforward, but I still see people mess it up. Ammo should be priced at a maximum of one cap. Ammo is sold per bullet, so if you set 10 caps per bullet, a measly 100 bullets will cost you 1000 caps. So caps have to be sold for one cap each. However, not all ammunition can be sold. Some types of ammo are just too easy to obtain and won't be worth anything. So if you use melee weapons, be sure to keep a lookout for these kinds of ammunition. The only types of ammo you can actually sell and profit from are special ammo like missiles, mini nukes, and cannonballs, ammunition like the 50 cal bullets, and occasionally the 45s, as well as all types of energy ammo. Energy ammo sells like hotcakes because it's simply too expensive to craft in bulk. Instead of spending countless hours grinding resources to craft energy ammo, 
it's a lot easier just to fork over a couple thousand caps and call it quits. Weapons are a bit more complicated than selling plans and ammunition. There are a few variables that need to be considered for weapon pricing. Rarity, legendary effects, mods, and of course, the demand. Let's use some of my weapons as examples. The Tesla rifle isn't that rare of a weapon, so the weapon price itself wouldn't be very high. The legendary effects itself aren't anything special either. Any potential buyer will just reroll those legendary effects, so the legendary effects won't add any value to the weapon. The Enclave plasma rifle itself can be difficult to obtain, and the Enclave flamer barrel can be even harder to get. This Enclave Plasma Flamer also has a severe beta wave tuner for increased damage. The legendary effects include up to 45% damage increase based on consecutive hits, which is really good for this weapon, and an increase in weapon speed as well. The other effect isn't bad, but doesn't really complement the weapon much. So you could just reroll this, but most people probably won't even bother. This weapon could potentially fetch a higher price with those legendaries. Chainsaws are probably the most sought after weapon in the entire game, simply because even without a melee build, this weapon still does a lot of damage. There's only a few places it can spawn, and you only have a small percent chance of getting the dual bar mod when scrapping, so selling a dual bar chainsaw would fetch a decent price. The legendary effects include restoring health when hitting targets, increased weapon speed, and plus one endurance. The big selling point for this chainsaw is that it's fully modded for maximum damage, and the vampire legendary effect is arguably the best legendary for the chainsaw. So as long as you have that, the other legendary effects really won't matter that much. This weapon would fetch a really good price on the market. Remember, you can't overprice weapons either. Most players would rather take the time to find and build the weapon themselves than pay 10 to 20,000 caps for one weapon. Setting prices for apparel is very similar to prices for plants, however, rarity plays a huge role. If an outfit such as the Hunter's Long Coat takes 16 hours of grinding one random encounter and costs 880 caps to purchase, you'll have to set the price at at least 880 caps and then factor in your labor costs. For an outfit like this, you're looking at 2,000 caps, even though many people sell it for 10 to 20,000 and no one actually buys it for that much. A much less rare item like the purple skiing outfit will only go for about 500 caps. Event clothing items such as the imposter outfits or other event clothings only go for roughly 100 to 150 caps. Maybe a little more if you're lucky, since they're not rare at all. I get setting high prices has the rare occasional sale, but what's the point of collecting every single event plan and rare clothing if it's just going to collect dust in your vending machine. The point of the vending machine is to have a steady income for all the items that you collect throughout your playthrough. Having 36,000 plans for sale at outrageous pricing is just vanity. The only people that will spend money on overpriced goods are those who have hit maximum caps and need to make some purchases so all their caps they earn in the future don't go to waste. Or the hardcore Fallout PC players that are ranked 2000 also known as collectors. The average player won't buy anything if you don't make affordable prices. Setting the right prices for your vendors can be pretty tricky, but it's actually pretty simple when you start to think about it. Knowing how to make sales will make the balance of your cap skyrocket. So as you embark on your vending adventures, keep in mind that the secret to financial success in Fallout 76 isn't found in a locked vault, but it's right inside your own camp. I hope this helps you become the best wasteland capitalist you can be. If you want me to make a more advanced price guide where I give you the best individual price for every single rare item, feel free to let me know and leave a comment of the items that you would like me to price for you. Feel free to check out my Twitch as well as I play a lot of Fallout 76 over there, as well as some other games. Anyways, that'll be it for today, and I guess I'll see you later.